I found out about Maharaji, of course, through Ram Dass, through meeting him uh, in the summer of 69 and immediately moving in and being part of that whole uh, summer experience in 1969. And uh, after that was over in the fall, I went back to New York and I was actually staying at my parents' apartment in Great Neck while I was figuring out what to do next in my life. Ram Dass was already gone. He was off in uh, Lama Foundation and unreachable. I hadn't yet met Hilda Charlton, who was going to be my first sort of real meditation teacher. And... Um, and I went to visit a college girlfriend. We took some acid. Well, actually, we split a tab of acid, and it split all on my side. And I went into quite an initiatory experience. And the next day, uh, when I went back home, or to my parents where I was staying, I was still tripping, but it was in much lower astral realms. And, you know, like hands reaching up, asking for help and things that were getting a little scary. And since I couldn't get in touch with Ram Dass, I didn't know anybody else to talk to about this. I took the little black and white picture of Maharaji that Ram Dass had given me and the wooden mala beads that we had gotten in New Hampshire from him. And I sat in front of that little picture and I just kept saying, I'm scared and you've got to help me. I'm scared and you've got to help me. That was my mantra. And I have no idea how long I did that for. And all of a sudden, the picture sort of, there was like this ball of blue light. And behind it or within it, I could see Maharaji moving. And it was, you know, just like that. It was quick. It was not an extended thing, but I knew he was there. I knew he was there and that whatever I had to go through was okay. So I lay down, I went through my trip, everything was fine. I immediately got a much larger picture of Maharaji after that. And I started just doing everything in my life in relationship to that picture. It was, you know, I had moved into the city, I was working at a PR firm to make some money so I could eventually go to India. And every time I was home, I would sit in front of this picture of Maharaji and talk to him. And frequently, I would see him in it. Sometimes, and, and it was confusing. I mean, at that point, we didn't know that periodically the barber would come and shave him, you know, or, you know, so his appearance would change. I remember looking in, at one point and going, what's Mayor Baba doing in there? Because all I could see was like the mustache. You know, so, but I, you know, I, I didn't tell anybody that I talked to his photo back then. You just didn't walk around saying I'm talking to a picture. But when I finally did get to India and finally was in front of Maharaji during my very first darshan with him, one of the first things he said to me is, you used to talk to my picture all the time. You asked many questions. Mm. And it was like, yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. And so I know that people today, I mean, who are experiencing Maharaji through a photo of him, really are experiencing and having darshan of him that way. Because obviously, time and space made no difference whatsoever. <laughs>